Be still, my heart. Why don't they build things so beautifully anymore? <laughs> Skin all in the middle. We're Kaylee and Lindy. In 2020, we left our small homestead in Idaho to start new and create our dream permaculture homestead in the Pacific Northwest. Each week on this vlog, we take you behind the scenes as we check more and more projects off of our to-do list. Join us this week to see the start of a very fun new project that will make our homestead life even easier. And if you like what you see, hit that like, subscribe, or share button to spread the word. I Welcome back to the vlog. Morning. <laughs> Stanley's already up to his normal antics. This morning, we are going to be operating Lindy's and Kaylee's sheep transportation service Yep. for our neighbors. Um, we need to take their sheep about an hour away. Um, so this will be interesting because we need to go catch them. Yep, I'll be way more chatty catty once I get them loaded up. You just never know when you're transporting livestock. This part is frustrating because we have a buy wind to get somewhere yeah. and we are working with livestock. Yeah. So, and sheep. And man, I don't want to play favoritisms, but sheep are not that. They're not my favorite. So, I'm not yeah. looking forward to it. We're not the biggest fans of sheep. But, anyways, um, these are our neighbors who left the country. They're living abroad right now. So, we need to just. They weren't able to arrange for their sheep ahead of time, so we're taking them for them and dropping them off. First things first, we gotta get them loaded. We have this whole grand plan to like have them already in a smaller pen last night, but we were tired and we didn't. So we have to go over to their pasture and catch them first. So uh, it's it's like we're DoorDash for sheep. Yes, we're <laughs> DoorDash for sheep. Uh, limited services only, though. Yes. We gotta go though. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so we're going to load the sheep into the back of their truck and we have our livestock box. This is Lindy's genius creation. It's amazing, it just fits in the back of your truck. Um, however, it's, it's super heavy. So we're gonna get that loaded first and then we'll, we'll work on catching the sheep. <laughs> you ready? Feeling muscly today? Yeah. All right, are you stuck in there? Well, if you wanna like watch the door, I'll be in here like a turtle. Okay. That's an idea. You're gonna lift the back, I'm gonna lift the front. Yeah. Okay. Silver, silver, you the you so we have to lift it and then we just lift and put. We lift it and we put it. Yeah, yeah, that's how we did it last time. had a situation. The back panel fell out. When we originally built the box, it was pretty fast and furious because of course we waited till last minute and had to like have it the next morning. Um, so we actually didn't have all of the like right size screws on hand. So that's why it's falling apart now. So we're just gonna use the right screws now that we have them real quick and just zip that back together. Then we'll put it back in the truck because Thanks. They say the struggle is real. I say the struggle reveals how you deal with the monster that's inside you. Ah. <laughs> well, it's not gonna blow away. All right, the box is loaded. Now it's time to get the sheep. Let the circus begin. <laughs> Hi, are you guys ready? Yep, that's why I was just thinking if we can lure him over here with some hay. Come on, guys. Oh, it's time to fire on up. Oh, it's time to fire on up. Pound on your chest like there's no tomorrow. Just play the game right. No one can follow. Oh, it's time to fire on up. Oh, it's time to fire on up. Okay, we did it. 
two sheep loaded. Good job, guys. Okay. Is it too early to drink? <laughs> what are you drinking? <laughs> you did it. Lindy really does not 840. like 840. 840, woo! Our goal is sleep by 845. All right, let's grab some coffee, hit the road. So we attempted to leave the farm together. Shocking. To drop the sheep off and then go to brunch. Which the, was lovely. But in the meantime, our youngest thought it'd be a really good idea to take his stitches mm. out. So instead of continuing on with fun things, uh, we were going to go to Kay's aunt's house. Uh, we're going to stay here and watch our son lose his mind. So I guess he's just going to be on lockdown, which means I am also on lockdown. So we're just going to be watching him and trying to keep him calm is impossible. That exist. Even though he has like basically sedative <laughs> that the doctor gave him to try and like chill out and he's still not chilling very well you would never know he's got that no idea. that's the problem because you're just crazy are you crazy yes yes that's correct you sound so ferocious this is my life now <laughs> sorry we didn't take you guys along with us today but we didn't really do anything exciting Lindy like mowed the lawn and weed eat it and I did a bunch of like planting work. Did you walk any louder? You're probably good. <sighs> but tomorrow we're gonna work on a project we've been meaning to get to for quite a while. So we'll definitely take you along for that. And it's supposed to be a rainy day, so we're just soaking up the nice evening while we can, sitting by the fire. Gonna have some food and some wine. Really loving the longer days. Oh my gosh, it's so a lot. Nice. Definitely yeah. need to get into the garden sometime soon. It is a mess in there. It's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. We had a lot of like slugs and cutworms. Um, so they're grubs, basically. They're, well, it's a flying insect, but lays its eggs. And then the eggs um, obviously hatch and the larvae are these little grubs that live under the soil. So. We had a lot of those and so I just let the chickens like go wild in the garden because hey, that's like the best method you can possibly get to like take care of those issues. Um, so the last, gosh, several months, the tractor chickens have been getting regular access into the garden beds and of course they like scratch it apart looking for the bugs, which is great, but not great at the same time. Right, so now I need to like top off all the beds with soil, put everything back together. They're efficient though. I mean, they they're are. doing their job, which we appreciate. Yep. That's exactly it. Like it's integrated pest management for a reason. Like it's so much more efficient than what we can do. And we have to put in zero effort, so. Well, and I think like it goes back to like having your property be like a full ecosystem. Absolutely, like I don't think the animal and nature chain can really be separated. Nope. It doesn't work, like it's broken if you have one without the other. Which is fine because I'm all about the animals and you're all about the plants. See, and that's why we make such a good pair. Yeah. Aww. Well, we're gonna cook food over this very pathetic fire. <laughs> good morning. Well, this should come as no surprise, but we're, we're running late this morning. We were a bit lazy. So I'm gonna get started on chores, get the horses out. Um, they are a little impatient at this point. We're gonna take care of these guys. Hi, beautiful. Are you ready? Let's go out. Are you gonna be good? You wanna go munch on the grass? Yeah. Oh, so hungry. You can't even step all the way out. Just take it. There's no reason we should waste it. I think we got it. The life we want it. It feels like everything is going our way. I think we made it. After all the waiting, it feels like everything is going our way. What'd you find? I like them. Yeah, they're cute. So um, the, the lawn crew finally showed up. Yeah, they're a little pushy. Look what I have. It's sick. It's sick. Hi, cuties. Oh, oh, oh. 
<laughs> All right, get in there, beautifuls. I think we got it. The life we want it. It feels like everything is going Um, I think you have some eggs. Um, I, like a couple of them. Lindy's the egg farmer around here. And the key to success is putting those clay legs on the tippity toppity. <laughs> that makes sense. But I have to go see if there's more quail eggs because I didn't check. No, not for Stanley. He's like, I will eat it too. Stanley. It's good for okay. me. But all of it just off of Yeah. It's, there's not a ton of flavor. So this is purple dead nettle. Oh. Isn't that going to sting? Did you just contaminate and kill me? No, no. It's not nettle, nettle. This is purple dead nettle. And it's all over in the springtime. It's in the mint family, Lineaceae. It has the square stem, which you can identify it by. It has the opposite leaves, meaning that they branch out at the opposite ends. It looks very similar to henbit, which is also in the same family and also edible, but it's just a great one to add on top of your salads, things like that. It doesn't have a ton of flavor, but it is really good for you. So it's full of vitamins and minerals and unlike nettle nettle, stinging nettles, this one doesn't sting. Most of the spring herbs um, and weeds are full of, like really full of like vitamins and minerals, which makes sense because as we're coming out of winter, we're kind of rejuvenating our bodies and that's what we need. But we should see if a quailsy would like to snack on it. I think vanilla would like that. Hey babies, do you want a little snack? So right now there's a pretty big storm that's rolling through and it's so windy. There's like a wind advisory. Um, the rain hasn't started yet, but it's supposed to soon. So we're kind of taking the afternoon off and just taking it easy. Everybody is sleeping, meaning primarily Stanley is sleeping after ripping out a few more stitches. So I'm making some coffee and we're just gonna have some coffee and kind of lay in bed and chill for a little bit and take advantage of this quiet moment. So as we're sitting down to have our coffee, I look out the window and those aren't supposed to be in the garden. Nope. Nope, they sure aren't. We're gonna go fix that now. Billy, go on back with mom. Go on, Bill. Well, that was honestly kind of a lucky save. So you can see we've done <laughs> quite a bit to try and keep them out. It's so hard when you just have gaps under gates like this. And for a lot of them, we'll actually put like big cement blocks that they can't push through. But I use this gate so often because the compost is right there. So I bring the finished compost into the garden area and I'm just going back and forth a lot through this gate. So we have these basically like hanging flaps of wood but obviously like those aren't heavy enough because they can push under them so then it's reinforced by other like giant branches um some posts with some rocks pushed up against it it's definitely a little bit of some jerry rigging going on but it's worked so far that's the first time they've ever gotten out so i'm gonna have to keep an eye on them now it seems like the wind gusts have kind of died down a little bit which is nice um, but it's still pretty stormy. So while I'm out here, I'm gonna put coats on the ponies, make sure they stay nice and dry because it's supposed to rain all night tonight and pretty much all through tomorrow as well. Now back to coffee and being lazy. Hi, Riley. Hi, kitty. Hi, cute girl. <laughs> so 
something you might have noticed on our channel are things like this. Um, the fact that we have <laughs> like fully exposed insulation hey. and open walls. And that's because um, when we purchased this 1950 house, it literally had not had an update since probably 1992, I'm gonna say. Yeah. In addition to developing the property, we've been developing the house as well. We've done a lot of things already. For instance, that light. This all used to be um, wood paneling, not the good kind of wood paneling either. This whole wall was wood paneling. Obviously you can notice like we're still missing trim, things like that. The ground molding just stops. So there's a lot of projects that we're in the midst of. In the house projects, we kind of just work on like, Randomly. yeah, <laughs> like when we feel like it, I guess. Cause it's not as like vital as like the garden, like we have to have food, right? So those priority, those priorities trump the other, what was I trying to say? Those are priorities. Yeah. I don't know. We're caffeinated, but I can't say that it helped any. <laughs> yeah. But another project that we've been wanting to work on is actually downstairs in the basement. So this area is really neat. I'm excited to show you guys. So let's go, let's go downstairs and we'll show ya. There is this exciting room. Also, I love these old doors with the brass handles and the actual keyholes. Part of like what we love about this house is the old charm um, and Places like this, like these little special things that we didn't know were here because we bought this house sight unseen. So this is a full kitchen downstairs. Lindy's just checking what's in the freezer. What are we having for dinner? We have some stuff down here that has been here since we moved in. We have not touched some of these boxes and more crap has just been thrown on top of them. So there's a lot that we need to do down here, but all of the cabinetry was obviously already here. The only thing we have added to this space were the freezers. So we have this really nice, like these are sturdy pieces. So we have, it's a very moldy squash. <laughs> Gross. You know, that's squash. <laughs> that's, um, that's embarrassing. So I clearly missed a squash. Look at this bad boy. Ew. Ew. I will clean it this week. Look, everything else is fine. These other guys are fine. Guys, it's, guy it's Kaylee's science experiment. I don't know how I missed that one. I think this is straight up vodka and lavender. What's that one? Milky oats tincture. Hmm. Probably needs to go at this point. Um, this is a coffee oil infusion. It's good for your face. Oh. It helps with these wrinkles and these hmm. bags and sags. So anyways, I have a lot of potions and things like that. That's what this used to be. So my dad built this and I absolutely love it. And it's like my little herb cabinet. So everything, all of my herbals are in here. They spent a long time putting together like my medicinal area in Idaho. Um, and then when we moved, obviously like we were just so busy and then we like hit the ground running and I never got I didn't it set realize up. we still had boxes. Um, these cabinets are very nice. They're not beautiful, but they're very nice. However, what we need to do is like, they're just <laughs> like random they're offered pieces spacing. of plywood. This part I've been working on organizing. So I organized all of our preserves into here this year so that they're actually easy to find. Like I have all of our tomato products together. I have all of our pickles together. I've got all of our lard in one area. Um, all of our jams and jellies, all of our sweet stuff. So like our apple products, our plums, plum sauce, all of that. So I worked on that this summer and I've slowly been, <laughs> you can see we still literally have jars just packed. And if you're ever moving, the best way to pack your jars, and this was all Lindy. Whoop, whoop. Yep. <laughs> is in um, shavings, pine shavings. We did not lose a, a single, single one. Jar. But what I've been doing is washing them and then slowly like packing them back in boxes. I'm trying to come up with a better system for lids. I think I'm going to use these Ikea boxes for like rings um, and things like that. So this is a big project. We have um, all of our dried goods are over here. So we tend to buy our dried goods in bulk. 
and try to store them as much as possible. And then obviously we just have random things like extra jars, crock pots, um, all this of our canning pots, which are massive. All the canning pots. I mean, the stuff we buy in bulk all kind of comes over here. There is no system. All of our dehydrators are in there. Um, tons of garlic. And then we have our secondary freezer here. And one of the things that you want to do is actually separate our foods between the two freezers because if one goes out, I've learned the hard way, we want to have a backup one. Oh, yeah. And then there's room for a stand-up fridge over here if we position things correctly. So we need to figure out how to properly lay this space out. It's great that we have water access down here um, to have a sink and we have this. Okay, you have to tell the story. So the people we bought this property property from um, trained horses and she had trained someone's horse in exchange for this stove. And she says it works. We haven't actually tried it. We should try it. It's the coolest. Like it is really fun. I really hope that it works. <gasps> How cute is that? It's a baking chart oh, or a meat roasting chart. My gosh. Yeah, let's try her out. It's got it's all push button, so the buttons light the burners. We'll leave one on and let's see if it I heard talk. something make a noise. Did it click? So it says so front and rear. Front, so this is on the left side, front and rear. And oh, it's getting warm. <gasps> oh my gosh, she was right. It does it work. work. Yep, <gasps> that one's warm. I too. hear it. I hear it turn on. Oh my gosh, I think this might work better than the one upstairs. Okay, so all four burners work. That's amazing. I smell it. They smell hot. Okay, so let's try the actual the oven. Yeah. Luckily, it's electric, so it should be fairly safe. So our idea with all of this is that this will eventually be our processing and canning kitchen, which is just amazing to have a dedicated space for that so that you're not destroying the rest of your house and you can just have your things set up like it's so hard right now because we haul out can all of our big pots watch oh <gasps> be still my heart why don't they build things so beautifully anymore <laughs> just getting all in the middle of it <laughs> it's so beautiful okay, so well yeah i guess i don't know which is which i just know this is hot i can feel it coming from the top you have it on broil don't you yeah uh-huh I hear it clicking. Oh okay. my gosh. Can't... So this turns it on. This helps with temp. <laughs> what is that? The cutest little thing. I don't know. Oh, wait, it's probably a crumb tray to catch the crumbs. Shut the front door. Because they used to build things right. I cannot believe this still works. Oh my God, it's getting warm. They just don't build it like they used to. What are we going to name it? <gasps> we have to name her, you guys. What about Big Bertha? Yeah, <laughs> she looks like a big Bertha. She's a big Bertha. Oh my that gosh. That makes me happy. That is the coolest. But look, it's made in the US. So Louisville, Kentucky. If anyone knows anything about these, please let us know in the comments. I know a lot of people restore these. So if you have any information on this gorgeous stove, we would love to know. It's all Jeez. shadowy in here, so sorry about the shadows, but it is what it is. This is the lighting situation that we're currently working with. <laughs> That's the other thing is the roof. So this half of the roof is open and this half is closed, but we've had to open it because of plumbing issues. Um, we've redone, oh, that fell. That's good. Um, obviously we had to drill a hole there <laughs> to get to some plumbing stuff upstairs. So we need to figure out how we want to use this space, how we want to set it up. It's such a cool space. How do we want to like, first of all, should we continue the roof? I kind of like the open roof just purely for access. It yeah, I say the, the ceiling is what the ceiling is. I mean, it doesn't look as finished as over here, obviously, but yeah, there's a lot going on. Yeah. I mean, this is literally all the plumbing for our entire house. Water, it's sewer, and we've worked on all of those lines. I've had to replace all of them already. Except for the main bath. Yeah, there's one bathroom that we haven't worked on yet. 
I think we keep the cabinets. Are they beautiful? No. We can but, like recreate some or something. Right. I was like, I think we can make them cute. Even if we did like trim boards. Yeah. And then like obviously like really cute knobs. And then inside what I want to do is like basically have the cabinets or the shelves set up so that they fit like too high stacked. Almost like this is. Like this is a great height for jars. But like it's so weird that they just use like extra siding and things like that. So I want it to be just a little bit more <laughs> consistent. And then like down here I want it to be so we can have these boxes like stacked. I don't want to like waste any space. So we could fit one, two, three. Oh yeah. If we had these shelves at the right height. And then on the bottom, keep those open so that we can have our pots and our bigger stuff like that. That round table that we have upstairs with like the till on it, we're gonna actually bring down here. Cause yeah. we wanna have a long like rectangle farmhouse table upstairs because we think it'll fit the space better. Right, and we can't have very many people over. It barely sits four. Yeah. <laughs> so it would be so nice to have that big round table, not big, the little round table here um and then we can have a nice place to sit while we're processing things and then over here i was thinking because we need the big freezer but we can move the freezers maybe it needs to go over there i don't know and then we can have this as like a big countertop workspace or i was thinking we could also have a workspace that basically is on a hinge and folds up and then can drop down over the top Ooh. I know, wouldn't that be cool? Like a butcher block one That's or something? Fancy. I don't know. Or even like just a laminate, mm -hmm. something that can fold up so we can access the freezer and then it can just flop down when we're down here working. Cause that's yeah. the thing is we're not processing all the time. Our biggest processing time of year is obviously end of summer. <laughs> She's thinking, <laughs> she's got thoughts, <laughs> which is always dangerous. So basically sky's the limit, obviously, the water access is where the water access is and this bank of cabinets wouldn't be movable. Um, but like this cabinet could be moved, all of the freezers could be moved, the stove could be moved because it just has to have a plug-in and we've got multiple plug-ins. So yeah, that's to come. So let us know your ideas in the comments down below. Like please, if you're like, ooh, this would be so cool or oh, I've always wanted this or I saw this once, please let us know. We are so open to ideas for this space. And then we're gonna take you along as we renovate this area. <laughs> Look at the ideas, <laughs> they're brewing. I've got visions, yes I do. <laughs> so let us know down below, but we will catch up with you all next week. Uh-huh. <laughs> we'll let you know some of the progress as we go along. So we'll be working on this off and on and hopefully Fingers crossed, it'll be ready for processing season. It is April now. We've got four months, plenty of time. And then that would make it so that the upstairs kitchen is a winter project. And then and the upstairs perfect. kitchen can be fall and winter. Yep. Babe, you in trouble. Let's do it. So obviously it has to be done on a budget. It has to be done in a certain time period and we have to do it while doing everything outside. So drop your ideas below, but Outside of that, the sky's the limit. So we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> I think we got.